So I may have been a little hasty in suggesting the last 10 things episode would be the final one in the series. What's up ladies and gents, Noli here, bringing you another 10 Payday Secrets. As a game in its 8th year post-launch still receiving updates, it shouldn't be much of a surprise that Payday 2 is full to the brim with hidden references and secrets. Here are 10 more for you to sink your teeth into. I'm not going to suggest this is the last episode this time as I'm sure there's more out there for me to find. In fact, I'd love you guys to drop the secrets you're aware of that I haven't mentioned yet in the comments down below. Now then, let's get into today's list. Kicking things off with an explosive secret, over on Watch Dogs, one of Payday's most iconic heists, you should be familiar with the escape method on day one. A vehicle comes in hot after you've secured the loot to pick you up and take you to the docks. If you're too slow, the driver ends up shot to pieces, forcing a delayed chopper escape. Well, what you may not know is you can very easily do the shooting yourself. If you happen to clip the vehicle with an explosive as it heads into the map, you'll hit the driver with friendly fire and cause the escape to flip out of control. Cool, but not so useful you may say. Well, in actuality, this strategy is key to watchdog speedruns. You see, the escape vehicle is always spawned in on this heist, and is even visible from within the playable area. With a well-placed grenade launcher shot, you can take it out from the road to the west, long before it's programmed to come in. This will unrealistically cause the car flipping animation to play out, but most importantly, once you take down the car, the secondary escape will be programmed to enter its inbound countdown. This means you can potentially escape far faster than Overkill intended, speeding up your watchdog's runs quite substantially in the process. Always nice when there's application for a secret. As with many games that have Steam as their primary platform, Payday 2 likes to tip its hat to Valve. Both GoBank and No Mercy are inspired by earlier Valve properties, Counter-Strike and Left 4 Dead respectively, and both maps are littered with easter eggs that go beyond their map layout. For example, Payday 2's Mercy Hospital has a familiar visitor found in the elevator. Bill from the first Left 4 Dead game can be found grumbling to himself in the lift into the heist. Please go outside and smoke, you can't smoke in here sir. I remember when you could smoke in the operating room. <laughs> Also on the rooftop of the building, it's possible to see these mirrored Valve logos, reminding us exactly from whom Overkill received their inspiration. Across many heists in the game, No Mercy included, it's also possible to have a surprise encounter with the Witch, and it seems like the patient is gradually mutating into a smoker. As the green flu is non-canon in Payday 2, we know the virus here isn't a zombifying one, so this is just a neat reminder of the heist roots. Over on Go Bank, not only will Bane name drop Counter Strike at just about every opportunity, the vault we're entering is unique. Just like the Taurus over on the transport train heist, this is another Team Fortress 2 reference, with a similar design to the vault doors guarding the intelligence in TF2, if just a little more detailed for the realistic setting. Sticking with No Mercy, those of you who watched my last story episode on The Secret will know I mentioned the provenance of the tattoo found on the patient in this heist. This is Mictlan Tukutli, the Aztec god of the dead and the underworld. Not only is this relevant to the final secret in the White House, and maybe gives you some idea of just what the arc of the Watcher is all about, it's probably also a little nod to this heist Left 4 Dead inspiration. Seeing as this was originally intended to be Patient Zero carrying the green flu, the addition of this death god tips its hat to the source material, even if the virus in Payday 2 was retconned to fit into the narrative around Bane's imprisonment. Oh, and these guys found near the rear escape are clearly not doing great either. Here's a highly practical secret that I hope many of you will know already, but if you didn't it might just save you some time and heartache if you want to emulate the ending scene in episode 13. You see, when you play Tony's piano to activate the secret, it will randomly generate 20 achievements out of a pool of 57 required to become worthy. If there's one in that pool that you really don't want to have to approach, by simply playing this song on the piano again, you will reset the 20 you've been given, allowing you to circumvent those nasty ones while still getting the secret ending. As with previous episodes in this series, Overkill devs love to reference their own favourite games whenever possible. First up on today's list, the Falcogini found on More Crasher has a number plate reading Stanley 427, a nod to the Stanley Parable and his employee number. Over on the Reservoir Dogs heist, we find what is widely assumed to be a GTA 5 reference, a game essentially set in LA just like this mission. 
Over on the high street, we see a familiar street corner and a boarded up storefront, closely reminiscent of the Vangelico jewelry store, the first hit in that game. Finally, the essential guide to bank robbery buck found in the Harvest and Trustee branch banks is a joke in its own right, but does also remind me of the reoccurring How to Pick Up Fair Maidens book from the Soulsborne series. One film which Overkill have never been shy of admitting as an inspiration for the Payday series is Heat. From the hockey heat mask to the stylish shades, there are many displays of admiration in plain sight. Another one which you may have seen, but not known where it came from, is the gang member speech on First World Bank. When you heist on this map with AI and take out all floor security within a minute of going loud, they will stand upon the bank's front desk and deliver an imposing speech to keep civilians in check. Stay down. We want to hurt no one. We're here for the bank's money, not your money. Your money is insured by the federal government. You're not going to lose a dime. Think of your families. Don't risk your life. Don't try and be a hero. Think of your loved ones. Don't try to be a hero. Now shut up and stay the fuck down. And this will soon be over. All the heisters have a recorded speech which follow the same lines as the infamous De Niro one. Even Jiro gives it a go. Next up, something for you if you're a fan of coded easter eggs. On the Alesso heist, head over to the sound booth after planting the C4 and take a look at the laptop. Written in binary code is simply, Overkill was here. Not too exciting? Okay, how about we stay on this heist but pay a little more attention to the shop names. Many of the food and merch stalls on the Alesso heist are named in a comedic and often innuendo-filled fashion. Take for example this tastefully named coffee shop here or the Japanese restaurant Miso Prawny. In fact, if we take a closer look at the goods on offer, we'll see even more brands verging on the lewd. I'm dubious about these party lemons, and Willy Weirdo is definitely up to no good. Always check the label in the payday world, someone at Overkill was having a field day when naming these. Hotline Miami is a game series which is quite rightly adored by the devs at Overkill. So much so, we even received a heist, character pack, and multiple masks inspired by or taken directly from the franchise. However, the homages run even deeper. On several heists, but most easily noticed on Brooklyn 1010, we see the graffiti answer the phone. One of the taglines from the first game, which was centered around receiving mysterious phone calls from the shady 50 Blessings organization. It goes further than that, though. The phone number associated with these calls used to be found in game in the form of the old Death Wish Pro Job achievement listing the very same number which could be called and met with this creepy response. We are 50 blessings together. March. March. Into the future. Uh, you have reached a wrong number. Even beyond this, the unique civilian models on the second day of the heist appear to be Beard and the Janitors, reoccurring characters from Hotline Miami and the rigged up hostage seems to be referencing a similar situation from the first game's mission, Tension. Unsurprisingly, if you find a QR code in Payday 2, there's likely something to be found on the other end. Back in the old starter safe house, every box came with a code. Secret hunters rejoiced, expecting something that would assist in solving Cagliostro's secrets mentioned in the Guide of Bane. However, we were left wanting more after scanning to find it said no more than, I love secrets. No wonder vault for us, sadly. But imagine our excitement when several years later we found more codes in game, this time on the yacht heist. Well, yet again, we'd be no close to solving the secrets of Baldwin's Lament as it translated to Shazan Box Enterprise. The hexadecimal code underneath was also a dead end, spelling out fishy business. Back then, Overkill were really enjoying toying with us as the true secret was being worked on. Even so, these are fun, lesser known details hidden in game. As ever with these videos, I like to finish off with a poorly understood mechanic which can actually help with your gameplay. We've covered threat and suppression separately, and last time I walked you through damage granularity. This time, I want to talk about a concept dubbed auto-hit in the long guide. If you look back to the how does threat work video, this mechanic works very similarly to suppression, wherein we discussed how shooting bullets in the proximity of a target can still be useful. As you can see, these shots seem to be hitting despite being clearly off target. This is because they fall within the degree of potential auto-hit, a statistic running in the background which allows your bullets to deal damage even if they're not connecting. At the start of a heist, this chance is above 100%, meaning you can consistently be plainly missing yet still taking out enemies. 
the chance will respond to how well you perform. If an actual or auto hit is landed, its occurrence rate will decrease for future shots. And if you miss or don't roll an auto hit, the chance of your next shot generating an auto hit will increase. This doesn't have a massive amount of application unless you really do have a terrible aim. There is one scenario where you should keep it in mind, however. If you're trying desperately to take out a sniper with a weapon with sufficient range, but not the accuracy, with repeated misses, your chance of auto hit will rise, allowing you to take out that pesky sniper if you have the ammo and patience, even if your chance of landing the shot seems minuscule. A fascinating mechanic that most players don't even realize exists, and finally, the perfect crutch for my terrible aim. And that does it for this episode of 10 Things You Didn't Know About Payday 2. Let me know how you did in the comments below. This episode definitely had some of my favorite secrets, and I hope you can even leverage a few of them into your own gameplay. Coming up next on the channel, I have some more mod content for you. Before we jump back into that crime spree deep dive, I promised last year. This is unlikely to be the final episode of the series, as I just keep finding and being informed of more and more awesome secrets. So keep them coming my way. Thank you all so much for watching, I'll see you very soon. As ever, thank you very much to my mean infamy patrons and above. If you want to join that infamous club to see yourself in the credits or get early exclusive access to my videos, including the story videos, check out my Patreon link below. Remember the Discord is open to all if you crave some more payday discussion. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you all very soon for the next one.